I just I need to get really close to my um, my mic tonight because it's really echoey in here. I feel quite um. The chairs are quite creaky as well. You sound like a night. Well, you are on a you're on a uh, swivel chair there. You're on a uh, a high backed task chair. Is that what they're called? Yes. I think they're called creaky ass chairs. No, that's a high back. Uh, high back uh, task chair with lumbar support I see uh, and hydraulic lift and tilt I can't I can't do any more of this northern stuff I'm I'm being outed as a like a person who bashes people from the north I'd like to point out and someone was 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 tweeting their credentials at me as why they would be a sympathizer of of northern people it's because of because of northern parentage I'd like to say to everyone now uh, that my my father my my grandfather in fact everyone on the paternal side of my family um were born in Berwick upon Tweed is that north that that you can't get any further north in England without being Scottish Pretty soon you won't be able to get mm. any further north in Britain. Yeah, it's true. It will be the most northerly tip of Britain. <coughs> I think we've spoken about Berwick before, because they didn't formally um, end hostilities with Germany until the 60s. Is that, uh, is that, the, the, second is that the equivalent of you saying you've got some friends who are black? That's, well, that wouldn't actually be true. I mean, I've got a, a mutual acquaintance. <laughs> well, I've got an acquaintance. I know one of your friends... <laughs> I, I think I'd be doing her a disservice to say we're friends because I don't see. Her. I mean, we always have very pleasant conversations. I think I make her awkward because I'm quite awkward company. But you're a very tall man. That's true. But she's quite awkward anyway. I know who you're talking yeah, about. She's Scar- quite awkward. I do sound echoey. You do sound echoey. See, as always, Scarlett being the better of me, she's got a very ethnically diverse group of friends. Well, she goes to a, a modern school, doesn't she? She does. She wasn't brought up in Winchester. No, not like me, la di da. So, um, so she's, you're basically in the mm-hmm. middle of uh, an inner city yeah. area. Mm-hmm. So she is going to meet more people. There's it's no like, choice. You'd have to really struggle hard know, to send her to an all-white school. I, I know there are more than 16. Yeah, and we, we tried. <laughs> there, there's definitely more than 16 languages uh, spoken more than you know, 16 more languages? More than 16 languages. To be fair, Noah's 14 months and he's already talking more than 16 languages. Well, None are. of them are English. No. They're tricky like that, aren't they? Tricksy little monkeys. I think we're seeing your family next weekend, though, aren't we? I, I think you are. I think the, the wives I'm gonna make a are cake. sorting something like that I'm going to make a cake, Nick. I've been making a lot of cakes recently. This weekend, I had a big cooking weekend. I was in the kitchen a lot. But I started off with what I've called my... And eventually I'll write down the recipe for this because I've modified it and made it my own. Um, it's called my triple threat chocolate sponge cake. That sounds dangerous. It's chocolate sponge, so a sandwich, chocolate sponge. In the middle is chocolate buttercream icing and it's uh, covered in uh, chocolate ganache. I like the sound of that. Mm. And I like the sound of ganache because it sounds a little bit like Ganesh, yes. who is, by dint of being one of the only... Yeah. Uh, 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 Indian elephant. It's an elephant, gods. isn't it? Uh, the, one of my favourites because it's yeah. the only one of the only ones I know. And also, well, that's uh, gash. You gash. Sounds a bit like, gash. like gash. Do you remember? Um, it must have been about twenty years or so. I remember there being a bit of a media furore because apparently this uh, Ganesh was crying milk, wasn't it? Do you not remember it was in the media? That rings that's, a bell. That's why we all know it because of the crying milk thing. Yeah, because someone was was basically putting milk on it and going, "Oh look, it's crying milk," and uh, people were bored. And instead of going, no, no, you're putting milk on it, they go, oh, yeah, so it is, it's crying milk. Oh, that's interesting. Because, you know, like, before, I don't know, what was it? it was probably 2001, wasn't it, when we stopped believing in ghosts, fairies and goblins? When the whole thing with the monolith yeah. happened. Yeah, it all became real, didn't it? all became real in 2001. Um, but before that, we would, like, you know, like crop circles could thrive in a pre-2001 um, world. Um, spontaneous combustion. Yeah, despite being just, human combustion. Yeah, despite mm-hmm. being, I, I spent much of the eighties in terror of spontaneous combustion. If I had a hot flush in the nineteen eighties, I was convinced that I was going to burst in the flames, which which may or may not be completely the fault of Arthur C. Clarke. I feel like we've either talked about it before, or we mm. promised at some point we were going to spend a whole episode talking about that and spooky because... stuff. We're, well, we're going to put it. We're, shall we? We we probably should keep it in the in the bag until Halloween. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't two thousand and one for me. It was uh, watching Threads, which I've definitely talked about. Yeah. Was really the point at which 
I stopped being I spent a lot of my early life mm. terrified of spontaneous human combustion and mm. then we watched threads my dad showed me and my cousin George threads mm. And and that suddenly, nice of him. from there on, I was terrified about nuclear war. Oh, I was terrified of both. Were you not terrified of both? Um, actually, I think I was. I think it's ghosts and vampires. I stopped being scared of at that right. point. You thought, well, nu- nuclear. Talk, talking of which, uh, did you watch this week's Doctor Who? <gasps> it was awesome. Do you know? Do you know what? I can't remember enjoying an episode of TV. And I'm not a massive Doctor Who fan, but my goodness. That was a good episode of television, wasn't it? I have watched a lot of good TV recently. We just finished The Leftovers, which was great. Mm. Um, but that that was definitely my favourite Doctor Who for a really long time. And I quite like Matt Smith. I'm and just, I quite just, like Steve Moffat. But just, just to place us where we are, we've just watched this weekend um, Silence. Yeah. Or was, was it, it Listen? Listen, it was called Listen. Listen, sorry, Listen. Which did allow for a few little bits of confusion because he kept talking about silence and baddies that are just outside of your sight. And I was thinking, that's, that's got quite a potent punch to it. Mm. But at the same time, in, my back, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, there have been other doc- new Who baddies who are... I think the silence were almost exactly the same. When you don't look at them, mm. you forget all about them, yeah, which yeah. is really similar. Um, and also, uh, there's a bit, and this isn't really a spoiler because it happens really on, it, really early on, it opens with the Doctor doing a really cool monologue and it's really mm. got gravitas because it's, uh, it's the first episode that I think has really given Peter Capaldi a, a chance to show how different oh, he oh, can it be. Oh, gave him something to chew on, didn't it? Yeah, but it starts out with him, him doing this talk about how nature has shown us the perfect predator and it shows like a, a big cat going after a deer or something and mm. he's watching it. And it said, uh, the ultimate defence... And it shows him looking at a puffer fish or a blowfish. I'm not sure. Is that the ultimate defence, though? Well, and well, and that's the thing. What about um? Uh, what was the was it was it um was it was it o two o three, the the Arsenal defence um when they went unbeaten for a whole season. I don't, really is that the fair, ultimate defence? That was more impressive than a puffer fish. I, I mean, they were excellent. I think that's your other show. Oh, sorry. Uh, but but then he says, but what about uh, creatures who are perfect at hiding? Nature hasn't even looked at that. It mm. hasn't even started trying to solve that problem. What if there was a... And I was like, well, I think I think Doctor Who might have heard of chameleons and stick insects and stuff like that. Definitely not my daughter. My daughter would not qualify for that. She is shit at hiding. She loves playing hide and seek. But, uh, yeah, she should give herself away very, very quickly by uh, giggling and saying, Daddy... Daddy, if I take ages to find her. Which uh, means that as a means of getting a bit of a rest, it doesn't really work for you. Not one bit. But it was a great episode. Brilliant. And and the way, I mean, it does a lot of things that I would describe as things I don't like about new Doctor Who. Mm. But it does them, but it's so good. Mm. It's executed so well that I don't care. It was, it was a good taught psychological thriller, I thought. Oh, I was really, really pleased, though. We, um, because we had company over Saturday night, I uh, didn't watch it until Scarlet had gone to bed. Um, and I'm really <laughs> pleased about that because uh, it was creepy, wasn't it? It was. And I know a few people who saw the teaser at the end of last week and mm. said, I'm not watching that one. Yeah. It's one of very few New Who episodes that could probably be watched standalone. The, one, the first one with the Weeping Angels was one of those. Yeah. Blink, I think. Yeah. And that one, although it veers into continuity territory at the end, nearly yeah. everything you need to know is in that episode, I think. Hey, if we, really if we're saying that uh, we'd endorse Blink, Silence and Listen, it really sounds like a 1980s children's informational show, yeah. doesn't it? About, I mean, what would that Blink, Blink, Silence, Listen, I, would it be about I don't know. not getting attacked by a librarian well, no, or something? I mean, it would almost certainly be um, an instructional video on how to... In inverted commas, survive a nuclear holocaust. Blink, because obviously it's very bright. You don't want to be blinded. Yeah. Uh, be, be quiet. Don't give your position away. In case there are, are Russians. Yeah. And listen listen to the radio um, where we give you uh, instructions, apparently, on how to survive, even though you're already dead. Except that I saw uh, When the Wind Blows, mm. and they oh, very God. much relied on the information that was g- the given to them in handouts, and it, it spoiler warning, it didn't. Didn't work end, out didn't well. End well. Doesn't end well. When the wind blows is not a happy watch, is it? No. No. The final episode of Leftovers, mm. again, I'm not going to spoiler it, but the final episode of Leftovers makes great use of the song Nothing Else Matters by Metallica. Oh, I like that song. I think 
and I'm not a huge Metallica fan, but well, I think I, that I, was that was an album that I knew really well. That one. I, we all listened to the Black Album, didn't we? Mm. I preferred the pre-Black Album Metallica personally. Of course, you did. You fucking hipster. Yeah, I liked Metallica before uh, all of the grungy hipsters of the nineties <laughs> got their fingers on them. Masters of Puppets being my particular favourite of their albums. Wh- uh, which the one was album Enter was- Sandman on? The Black Album. Exit night. So basically, when they discovered MTV. Properly, no, no, they not, properly no, not at all. MTV. They just they just sort of discovered a more commercial sound. The uh, the videos to those songs were all awesome, though. They were very good. Yeah, but then they had a big video hit with one from the Injustice for All album. That's you two you're thinking of. No, it was um, it was the. Do you not remember? It was um, from the film Johnny Got His Gun, and it's it's basically the kid that comes back paraplegic um, and deaf and blind, so no limbs. That's Tommy. And That's he, you're talking about the Who. No, no, rockumentary. no, I'm not. no, because no, he's deaf, dumb, and blind, but he can still play a mean pinball. Whereas, oh, yeah, no, whereas right. the kid in one um, really couldn't play a mean pinball. Um, he, no, oh, it's horrible. Sounds like a shameless rip off. Me and my friends, again, this is going to explain much about my personality. Me and my friends used to spend an inordinate amount of time as teenagers watching the uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall and the video of Metallica's One. See, I was discussing with someone after the after the the. I don't know if it was the most recent or the second most recent episode of the excellent Rachel and Mars Explain the X-Men. That's a very good podcast, but yeah. it's not really a cross-promotional opportunity, so we shouldn't really go on about it too much. Um, that the the song one, they covered the X-Men, the wedding issue mm. of the X-Men, and I've long uh, thought that's that's kind of that, that comic is the er uh, text for me. Mm. I, lo- I love that term. I don't know what it means. It means like the definitive, the ultimate, the uh, first the, from... Well, it's like the platonic ideal of the text of something. It's difficult to explain because it's, I don't really understand. I just It's difficult like, for me because I've been getting, I've been getting dictionary.com's word of the day for a few days, but that hasn't come up yet. Anyway, so it's, it's kind of that, uh, that issue is ground zero for my ongoing fascination with what I feel are inappropriately dedicated songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know when when people uh, call in to the dedication shows in on uh, yeah. daytime radio, drive time radio, and they say, "Oh, just uh, this is for my my husband. Uh, I, I want uh, the uh, the song Don't Stand So Close to Me by Sting because it was like he used to play it to me when I was one of his students." Nice. Uh, well, that's that's was, the perfect. Story. Well, no, that's actually yeah. the, that's actually exactly the right time to use it. But mm. like as a romantic song, and it's like yeah. it's not a romantic song. But the the first time when I really became fascinated with this, especially in relation mm. to wedding, you know, I was tunes, just thinking about yeah, is um is that that Jean Grey and uh, uh, Scott Summers used the song one as mm. their first dance, and it's there are romantic lyrics in it, mm. but when you listen to the whole thing, like a lot of pop songs, yeah, uh, stop saying lo- words, Nick. lovey when like a lot of lovey songs, mm. uh. The chorus is very mm. catchy and has a nice sentiment that you mm. can really get your teeth into as yeah. a romantic. But when you listen to the verses that contextualise everything, mm. it's actually quite bleak. Yeah. And so the argument, one argument for them using that song is th- 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 these two characters have come on a long journey and it isn't mm. always great. And considering where they end up later on, it, it isn't an easy mm. relationship. And so that song perfectly... Mm. Um, captures that really mm. and i was like yeah i agree how thematically it works but normally people pick something aspirational for their first time i don't think people pick was your your phrase there people pick pop human, pickers human select human select i'm not popping am i yeah it looks it looks fine well i'm just telling you what i'm hearing in my ears <laughs> what do you think uh listener i don't know that's the other the pop- no, it works for this one. Okay, very they're, they're still a listener. I don't know what's going on anymore. Yeah, normally people pick something aspirational. You still went with people it's, pick. It's I can't. It looks fine. Okay. And do you think people pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up? <laughs> it sounds fine. Fine. <laughs> Completely lost my Pe- thread. People pick. Usually, usually people choose a song that is more aspirational rather yeah. than one that perfectly reflects mm-hmm. their relationship. What was uh, yours? Uh, uh, only You by, is it Yazoo? Yes. And I'm sure there's something wrong with those lyrics, but we just really like it. 
And I guess that's why most people choose, so I shouldn't yeah. be too hard on, on people. But, yeah, the um, middle verse, I'm looking forward to murdering you and our 10-year wedding anniversary is a bit weird. Well, and the thing is, in the comments, I made this long-winded comment because I apparently can't leave a short comment on, on the Rachel and Miles site. And someone was talking to me about how um, actually the story behind, I've always thought of it as a, a story about a horrible uh, relationship of obligation, mm. like a, a, f- a family relationship or something like that, where yeah. you have to... Mm-hmm. You have to put up with some because you love them. But mm. you, when you say the when you say you love them, it's more of a an accusation. Mm. It feels like when Bono yeah. says it, like yeah, I'm stuck with you, sort of thing. Mm. And someone explained to me, and no, when they wrote that, they you two were going through some very difficult times as a band internally, mm. and they were trying to. Um, that song was a, a way of of dealing with that internally and that all makes sense and it kind of explains mm. it to me but now you're telling me that it was a cover version of a metallica song yeah about a paraplegic so i don't know what to think no how is it when you say it's a, a it's a song about paraplegic mm. is it like he ain't heavy he's my brother he's which, which is like a light-hearted way of dealing with the same C- certainly he's a lot lighter than he was when he went off to war oh my goodness mm. This I mean, it's it's, ba- it's about, basically about a, a guy, you know, he can't see, he can't speak, no arms or legs. Just, but he sure just, plays mean shuffleboard. No, he's just praying for death. Oh. Mm. What can he do? Nothing. He can't he see. Can't see, can't speak, can't hear, and he's got no arms or legs. No arms or legs. Yeah. But how does he smell? Awful. <laughs> <laughs> Can't, uh, can't wash himself. It's horrible. It's really tragic. Someone and he's got he's got festering wounds, mate. It's not good. None of this is really funny. Not at all. I mean, well, be... I'm in a bad mood, Nick. Are you in a bad mood? I'm in a bad mood. I've, I, I don't know. I've been uh, enraged today by um, people's attempts at kindness that have just backfired into them getting cross with me. Drivers. I'm talking, we talked about I'm thinking, that a little bit before. I'm thinking sorry. specifically about drivers, and this is a phenomenon I have observed as a pedestrian who can't drive. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a pedestrian, I'm a confirmed pedestrian, I think it's the 70s euphemism went. A couple of times today I've been waiting across the road, and I'm quite laid back about crossing the road. What I tend to do, my technique is, I wait until there's no cars coming, and there's no cars waiting to come. And uh, then when, when it's clear, I'll cross, that's what I'll do. So a couple of times today, for some reason, drivers have felt the need to, to wave me across. Now, one thing before, before I get started on that as well, there's ways of waving people over. Don't act like you're doing someone the biggest fucking favour in the world. Or if they're like, not, like, foot out on the yeah. road. Yeah. Or act like you're in charge of the fucking path or the road or something. You know, the fact that you're in a car doesn't put you in charge of fucking anything apart from that car. You're angry so, about this, and I thought so you were going to be. This is good. Don't act, don't act like it's some sort of favour from the get-go, to be honest with you. But what really winds me up, right, is it I, both times I've failed to see because I'll be... Second time I was talking to someone, and I was having a perfectly nice conversation. I didn't give a shit that this car was coming. It's, I was waiting where I, where I was. I was anyway. And and the first time I was just I was in a world of my own. Cause it's first thing in the Monday morning. I'm walking away. Both times because I failed to observe them. By the time I look around, they're getting angry with me. If like, fuck off and drive away, then if you're going to get cross me, don't bother. If you're good at crossing the road. I'm brilliant at it. So yeah. far, I haven't been run over once. But if you're good at it, you're kind of looking up mm. and observing. And if cars seem mm. to be coming, even if they're a bit of a distance off, mm. you don't cross. You just no. stand there. So it's yeah. perfectly reasonable for you to mm. be checking your phone or whatever. Yeah. Because you know that for 30 seconds you're not going to be able to cross the road. I'm incredibly situationally aware when I'm crossing the road. Because you don't want to get run over. I'm really against the idea. And social awkwardness when the other person is behind over a tonne of Mm. metal. Yeah. It's not really something you want to get into. No, I'm perfectly relaxed to let... And I also understand that the road bit, a car has the right of way. So take it. Take the right of way. Stop with this... I, I, I don't know if you're like, they're trying to make themselves feel better then they're making themselves feel superior by getting angry with me it's a real ego thing I find but people are irrational at the best of times when they're in their cars which is a very interesting piece of human psychology as far as I'm concerned yeah anyway. no one's ever noted that so no and that's not an original observation so let's not dwell on that point let's dwell on the original observation that people who let you cross the road are all bastards 
and peanuts on air, airplanes are really hard to open. I think I think the people who try and do you a favour without you asking, mm. an unsolicited favour, yeah. is a deeper well to explore. Yeah. And I don't think it is. I mean, it, OK, it makes us sound like more cantankerous bastards mm. than pretty much anything yeah. else we've ever discussed, probably, mm. difficult as that is to believe. Yeah. But... It is, it is to, if you're not ready, actually crossing the road is one of the best examples of this. Mm. If you're not ready to cross for whatever reason, mm. um, or you haven't paid attention, that is, it's kind of forcing you into a, a situation where you're yeah. obligated to some mm. complete stranger. And it wasn't mm. like your, it wasn't, a, a, it wasn't a transaction you wanted to enter and into. And more often, not, sorry to labour the point because you're going on to a wider point, more often than not. As the pedestrian, you're more situationally aware than the driver. Because you're more, scared. More than one occasion I've been told I can go out and there's a frigging car overtaking mm. the other one and about to run me over. I I do have a wider point, but I can't think of a single example. So it's okay if we stick to I, this I can. one. Well, I can. I, it, it probably goes back to my depression, actually. Because let's, let's, go, let's go back to that well. No, I like that well. Good. I think okay. people like that. I feel, I feel more capable. Asking for help is difficult. Okay, um, very, it is hard, but I find it easier now. One of the things that used to get me really wound up prior to, to going to see the doctor, being dragged to the doctor by my loving wife to get better, but one one of the things I used to feel most strongly was this sense of irritation that people could could obviously see what was wrong with me. Everyone could would obviously tell how I'm feeling, and and why weren't they all changing their behaviour mm-hmm. to better suit mine? And I'd got myself into a headspace where I, I couldn't ask people to help. I couldn't tell people what I needed. I was just getting angrier and angrier and angrier that that it wasn't just coming to me. That's difficult. Mm. Difficult. Difficult mental acrobatics going mm. on there because. On the one hand, that's very entitled. Yeah, absolutely. But on the other hand, when I've had similar problems, mm. it turned out they were all asthma. Apparently, I don't have anything wrong mm. with my brain. It's all asthma. Mm. And actually, in my uh, working environment recently, we've all started spotting that there are like car fumes and stuff coming in. Uh, so maybe I'm not even stressed. I, f- I feel very stressed. <laughs> you look, maybe yeah. it isn't stress. You look stressed. Um, but the I. What you're asking for at a really basic level mm. is empathy mm. from other people. And I don't think, and generally, I don't expect empathy from other people. Mm. I figure, well, it's something it's difficult. And so I don't want sympathy, absolutely don't. Mm. But at a basic level, I want people to consider a little bit mm. what I might be going through. But most of the time, I don't expect it because I know what people are like. Mm. Except when for one reason or another i've had to go through a sustained period not had to i've ended up going through a sustained period of empathy of of making excuses to myself on someone else's behalf for something they've done i'm still quite adept at that myself but yeah i uh, but for sure but when there's a colleague who's going through some stuff mm. and you're like well that's okay I, I mean i understand i'll i'll take a little bit of the slack they obviously aren't as good in this particular area or whatever so you take a little bit of the slack or if it's in a relationship and then when they're through that and they don't need you to do that, mm-hmm. they don't acknowledge it, which is fine because you don't do mm. it because you want acknowledgement. But then they turn around and have zero empathy when you're going through something similar. Mm. That's when it, it kind of bothers me. I, well, do you know, I think you might have hit the nail on the head. Even, even off... This is very difficult because this really does make me seem like a curmudgeon. It's very hard to be completely altruistic. Mm-hmm without having a little bit of residual requirement to have some sort of ego stroke. So I, I think it's why, um, you know, it, you, can, you can see that at play, actually, when you watch things like Comet Relief. Mm-hmm. That it's basically you're sitting watching this programme where a presenter is telling you over and over again what a good person you are, reinforcing to you again and again, you're a good person, you're a good person, because you're given that £10, and I think I've actually ranted about this in the past, mm-hmm. I believe it. You've given this ten pounds, but you're spending the rest of the night sitting there having your back slapped and your ego scratched. It's like, well, no. If you give a shit, really give a shit deep down, then you're giving that money anyway, aren't you? Or you're doing something about it. Yeah. 
you know and we're all like that i fall into that trap as well i'm not i'm not sitting here claiming that i'm a paragon of virtue and no one else does it but it's a thing that really upsets me that we live in a society where we like to kid ourselves on that there's such a thing as altruism when well, you, it, i mean you live in a society <clears throat> where you believe that i believe one of my catchphrases for this mm. show is there is no such thing as true altruism yeah, well, That's yeah. probably only the second time I've used it. Really? Okay, well, I'm agreeing with that now. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it only probably took you about 50 episodes. But when I say we, I'm talking about society as a whole. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it's much easier to talk uh, um, about society as a faceless, uh, amorphous mass rather than actually uh, taking into account the nuances of individual opinion um, Absolutely. and motivation. Taking society as a whole, yeah. which it is, society is yeah. a whole. yeah. And we're all stuck in it. Yeah. Just scrambling to get out. Let me out. Ooh. But yeah, I I don't... The only times... And I don't feel... Uh, I, I'm not proud of myself for this. But yeah, I try and have empathy mm. in as many situations as possible. It, it only... It does only really bother me when someone's like mean to me or doesn't consider my situation mm. when I've done it for them in the past. But then that's... Yeah, that's not why you do it. The thing about driving... The thing about drivers that's interesting is I only did my... And I have the same thing when I'm driving mm. and other people, like, stop to let me into a parking space. That In fact, the one crash I did where I crashed backwards into a, into a, a trolley park mm. in, a, in a car park... Um, well, that's the other thing, isn't it? Pressure is putting pressure. You, you're trying yeah, to be I, nice, but all you're doing is increasing someone's pressure to perform. Exactly. And when it's, uh, I'm not a very good driver, and I know mm. you, you can, you can have those little green, uh, green p plates, p plates, if you want. Yeah, yeah. But I, that doesn't really satisfy exactly how I feel. It's only in situations like that where I feel like, well, don't. Don't put me in a position because I'm not good enough driver to get into that space. Just coming here, Nick, I saw an example of those pee plates not working as someone was being slightly dithery. Pee plates. Pee plates being slightly, <laughs> being slightly dithery about which lane they were going to be in around a, um, around a, a roundabout. Very clearly had pee plates on. looked like they were a recent... But it's this person just going mental, mashing their horn behind them. It's like... Yeah, I think... It must be nice for that person who was behind the person with the pee plates to have been born completely perfect and without fault. And I felt very grateful well, um, that I'd got to be so close to them. There are certain there are certain things in that I still remember very clearly from my driving mm. lessons because it wasn't that long ago. And one of the things that my driving instructor said was there was a time when I stopped to mm. let some pedestrians out. Yeah. The traffic was moving quite slowly mm. anyway. And I stopped to let some mm. pedestrians out and I signalled them across. Mm. And she said, well, it was okay then, but mm. never do that. Yeah. Never signal pedestrians mm. across because at that point, never stop for them mm. like that. Never signal them across because you are tacitly taking responsibility for it being yeah. safe for them to cross. Mm -hmm. And you can't be sure that there aren't other cars mm. coming. That, do you know what I mean? It, it, it actually, it's actually quite bad practice for drivers to do that with pedestrians. Where, where do you stand legally on taking tacit control of a situation? I'm assuming that you wouldn't have liability in a court of law? I don't know. Well, I I don't know. Probably not. Good. But well, carry on doing it, but, it's fine. But at the same time, mm. you are taking... You are kind of... You are... You are suggesting mm. to the person, to the pedestrian, mm. that it is safe for them to mm. go. Now, they shouldn't trust you... No, I don't. ...because you're like, just some complete stranger. I don't. I don't trust drivers, Nick. But then, but then they are in the position that you're talking mm. about, yeah. where... where they're pushing. They're pushing you to go mm. across, and you don't. You don't know them from Adam mm. or Eve. I might refuse. Or Steve. Adam or Steve. Adam or Steve. That's not in the Bible, Nick. I know that because um, I saw on the news a very angry American person suggesting that might be the case. See, um, Pope Francis um, did a load of weddings at the weekend, didn't he? It was seventeen people that had previously been cohabiting. Scandalous scandals. One of them had a child from previous marriage, and the nice progressive Pope agreed to marry them isn't that nice he um he's a great guy nick i'm not sure how i feel about the head of uh one of our oldest and most venerable uh religions mm. uh dabbling his foot in polyamory or polygamy like that i i'm not sure he should be married to anyone let alone to all of these families 
Mm. These little, especially like if there's a kid there, I'm not sure how I feel about him marrying into a family really, where he's married to all three of those people. Really, if one really, of them's a child, that's weird. Well, to be fair, that's par for the course with the Catholic Church anyway. But he, not all Catholic. Hashtag, priests. hashtag, not all Catholic <laughs> priests. An awful lot of them, but not all of them. <laughs> Just lots. Yeah. It's good. It's good they've completely got to the bottom of that problem, though. So well done. Well done, Francis. Oh, that is brilliant, isn't it, as well? Because he was in status quo for all those years. Was he? Yeah, I think so. I. So he's not the one who was in the Pixies? No, that was the last one. That's Black Francis. Black, <laughs> black Francis. Who yeah. isn't black. It's very confusing. I think he's metaphorically black, isn't he? Uh, what, Black Francis from the Pixies? Yeah. What about he Barry? Was, well, of course, he was he was very famously um, uh, religious uh, as a youngster, wasn't he? What about Barry White? Well, no, he was black, yeah. See, that's just confusing. He was, he was taking a piss, wasn't he? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, my daughter I'm likes, counting on... Go on. Scarlett likes both those artists, strangely enough. I'm kind of counting on the Bloodhound gang not being well-known enough anymore for me to just make shameless <laughs> jokes using their lyrics. <laughs> Good that's, that's entirely one of those. Uh, I, I feel that now's a good time as well for me to confess that about a month ago, mm. I I may have in slightly conscious tribute mm. to uh, the podcast Regular Features, mm. which I was listening to a lot at the time, specifically I think John Blythe on Regular Features. Yeah. I, I may have accidentally on purpose said the word urethra on uh, every single podcast I was on brilliant. for about two weeks. Well done. I didn't pick that up, and I'm on most of them. And it's not its not a word that just casually falls into conversation. Well, in this one. <laughs> well, this one, maybe. Oh, you did the Aretha Franklin joke on the other podcast. I remember that. I probably did it on all of the podcasts. All oh, right. Uh, there's a very good, I think, one of the best episodes of Unanswered came out recently. It's mostly about... Uh, po- it's mostly about... It's mostly about the cinema experience. Mm. But there is an extended... Uh, an extended segment about popcorn etiquette, mm-hmm. especially when you're a sex offender. Okay. Well, no, not when you're a sex offender specifically. I'm misleading people. No, you should oh, definitely listen to it. you riffing on the whole thing of a, a chat putting a, a... Whether or not this ever happened, but the, 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 the trick would be, wouldn't it, that the chap puts his penis, a rep penis... He puts his chap... Through, through the bottom of the popcorn... Um, And as his partner is groping around for more popcorn, she touches the top of his penis, thereby rubbing the salt from the the salt and the oil from the popcorn into his penis, rendering it very painful for a number of days afterwards. I would imagine we 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 got a bit sidetracked by the logistics of that exact thing. Yes. Well, I can see how it would happen. You remember the old um, the old popcorn boxes that become um, that come flat. So they've got come how flat. And um, they've got like a four segment, four folds at the bottom that then flatten out um, to create the bottom of the. Well, you could actually quite easily poke a penis through that and still retain a seal around the, around your penis because obviously that would push up from the centre where the, where the weakest part of that that particular um, that particular construction is. But as as the the member slides through that, it would seal around the side the shaft basically. Oh. Um, Especially, like, you know, right down to your... If you got it right down to your balls. My, uh... Seal that up quite nicely. Quite airtight. Uh... You're in trouble with the solid-based popcorn uh, thing. You'd actually have to... I think it'd be harder, because you'd, you'd have to take a little template of your erect penis, the circumference of your erect penis, and cut it very carefully into the bottom of the... Otherwise, you're just going to lose popcorn, aren't you? You would. No one wants to lose popcorn. No. I mean, um, I want to get my penis touched, but I don't want to lose popcorn. The natural, the natural place for me to go at this point mm. is is to ask questions that I've already asked. On the yeah, podcast. let's not do that. But um, let's respect the boundaries of our various podcasts. We should talk about our various podcasts. Oh, do we have to? Well, no, you, we should. You, I think you've already mentioned you recorded another full kit. No, we we're about to record You're another, about full, to record another full, full kit full banter, kit banter. This, this Saturday coming, which would be the tenth of September. Feeling good about it. Yeah, really good. Yeah, we've um, we've fleshed out a running order today, so we'll be filling in some gaps there and making sure we got our research done by the weekend. By uh, fleshed out, filling in. You're thinking about the popcorn again, aren't you? No, we we literally have a running order put together. You're writing notes and stuff. Yeah, we have a written running order. So you're not just going on Wikipedia. Well, I might for some of it, but anyway, I'm. I'm sound so sounds so organised. I got. We are quite organised with it. I like to be though. You do. 
with that one. All right, OK. It helps, though, because we're talking about the nation's favourite sport, so we really can't let ourselves down. You can't in the way fuck that. about. It's you not can't trivial, fuck about. <laughs> like yeah. parenting. Yeah, it's not, yeah, exactly. It's not trivial like bringing up a child. It's football, mate. It's important. You wouldn't understand. You've recorded another podcast? Uh, Jane and James have just watched, which was really good fun. That's with Jane, who used to record the Momcast with us. Uh, and we watched a movie, and then we talked about it. My question to you is, yeah. when undertaking these new things... Mm. It, it's still... It, you, it, you're I still basically, love you best. No, you're, you're... Oh, no, I don't worry about that too much. You should. Um, you have your cock out, like, throughout mm. every recording of this, yeah, so I'm pretty true. sure how you feel. Um, the... Uh, is there... Do you... Because are you still taken over with the joy of creativity, or is there any fear that... Because we've gone from a podcast that we were doing for 250 mm. yeah. uh, uh, episodes... Mm. And we, I had to drink when we started doing those. Mm. But we got into that pretty quickly. Yeah. So certainly you and I got into a tempo within a few weeks, probably. For sure. Considering we didn't really know each other. And when we started this, mm. um, it, it was something I so urgently wanted to do because yeah. I felt those – it was a couple of months, I think, mm. a, f- a few weeks after Noah was born, and I was already feeling, now I want to be yeah. doing something mm-hmm. about this because I already feel like my, with my memory I'm losing mm. stuff. We, uh, are, we're going to be launching um, – what I've been referring to as Mom Next, mm. although I think that has come to it describe all of the yeah, projects yeah, yeah. after Mom. Yeah. But certainly um, the the plan for me and I think for you was always that we would return with something very similar to MomCast. Nice, we just yeah. needed to iron some stuff out. And so that's going to start on Thursday. Yeah. And admittedly, it, with... With the other shows we've done... Really, by Thursday, you're going to have to learn to only talk when you're looking at the, at the microphone. microphone. I know, maybe I don't have to learn that. Maybe it doesn't matter at this point, because people know what they're in for. It's good. Um, it, with this show, uh, I'm not sure if it's just the anxiety of starting a whole mm. new podcast, because it's going to be with people that, you know, it's going to be with all mm. of us, the mom yeah. cast people, so it's going to be fine. But with this show, mm. and with the mom cast, mm. we did... We sometimes asked people to do stuff for us, yeah. uh, like art or or other sorts of contributions. Or hold our popcorn for us. Or hold our popcorn, yeah. And um, and at the same time, we had stuff done for us, which was very kind. You know, people people made us. Uh, yeah. Steve made us music. Yeah. He made us uh, graphics. Uh, without us, really, you, you know that that was yeah. just a gift. We mm. didn't even ask for that. Um, I'm asking a lot of people for stuff yeah. for this one. And so far, everybody's been really cool about it and really mm. kind. And I really should have, because of the people I'm talking to, I really should have assumed that was going to be the case. I did assume that was going to yeah. be the case. I was only asking, I've only asked good people mm. and nice people to do yeah. stuff who have already shown an interest in stuff we do. But for some reason, because this is all front-loaded before a recording that's going to happen mm-hmm. on Thursday... Even though I should know that I'm that we are capable of pulling this off, but I'm capable of getting a site yeah. up and running and all of this yeah. stuff, I'm I'm kind of quite terrified. Really? You no, know, I'd be fine. I'm. It's it's just it just feels like I'm asking a lot of people for a lot of stuff. We yeah, you are, and um, you know, the worst worst that could happen, they end up hating you and feel cheated. I mean, that's that's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's. No, that's true. That's the that's effectively my uh, vibrant inner landscape is th- kind of like that already. I think so. when I when I listen to your when I listen to your problem, Nick, I I think what immediately I uh, the place I go to is I ask myself this question: How does it affect me? And, <laughs> and I have to say, really, if people hate you, it doesn't affect me that much. No, that's true. I mean, true. I feel I feel slightly bad for you because I'm very fond of you, but you know, apart from that, yeah, I'm all right. James is like, oh, I, I got out of running the whole Momcast thing, so I didn't yeah. have to think about this shit yeah. anymore. The the cleverest trick that James ever uh, pulled off was making Nick feel uh, he didn't exist. Mm-hmm. Or something, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm Apparently I'm as good as the devil now. Do you, do you watch Adventure Time? Uh, on and off. I've been thinking a lot about the Ice King. 
Oh, he's terrifying. Yeah, I I have Don't, a sneak. He did it again. Sorry, I have a sneaking feeling that most people, when they watch Adventure Time, mm. their totem in the show is Jake, Jake the dog. He's the most fun. Mm. He's kind of. Um, it's not. It's not clear. You know, in most shows with an ensemble, you, you can ensemble. Main, ensemble ensemble. You can look at the main cast and you can sort of see there's a, a one. A fairly decent template for writing and that sort of thing is id, superego, and ego. You mm. have characters that represent the different parts of a personality. And you're what's always... the lumpy space princess thing? Because that's who I. That's my totem. I think she's ego. Oh, okay, there you go. But she might be super. It, it, there's a lot of characters mm. in Adventure Time who are really good. But I think I think most people associate with one of the good characters. Mm. And I've been thinking recently, and I did tweet about it in the week because mm. I watch I watch it a lot with Noah. Not every mm. episode. It, it turns out the visuals, although they are sometimes mm. creepy, aren't as scary as some of the audio on that show. Okay. It can get quite... Lemon Grab mm. is terrifying. We haven't watched one yet with Scarlet where she's freaked out. She's she's quite tough. The only thing that scares Scarlet is uh, the big bad wolf. Oh. Everything else, she's bulletproof. Uh, Noah's, Noah seems fine with it. Mm. And he doesn't... He doesn't really pay an awful lot of attention. Does he not? No. He uh, he likes the music at the beginning. He doesn't really pay a lot of attention to the rest mm. of it. But um, there was a, there was one episode where Lemon Grab has a complete nervous breakdown. Okay. And it's very intense. Mm. And I did kind of want to cover Noah's ears because it's scary. Lemon mm. Grab is... For, when, when that show dabbles in representing mental illness... Even yeah. though it's never framed that yeah. way, it's pretty horrific. Yeah. I I was the question, the thing, the thing I posited on Twitter and Facebook this week is, I love you went with posited. Posited. Well, it Was wasn't it really a question. P? Another P. Uh, but it wasn't really a question. So we could have just said axed. Asked. Axed. Um, does that cover posited? Yeah. The I I can't. Adventure Time is very popular with young people especially t- re- relatively hip, geeky people. It quite is well-loved with youngsters. Quite like it. Um, the Ice King, in mm-hmm. the episode you've mm-hmm. seen so far, mm-hmm. is basically as close to a sex offender as it's possible to get oh, in yeah, the context of that, of that show. He, mm-hmm. I assumed he was a Catholic priest. To begin with, he's kidnapping princesses, but that's mm-hmm. kind of laughed off as a thing that happens yeah. in that world. Yeah. But there are episodes like where the 70s. yeah. But there are episodes where whoa, don't know what happened there. There are episodes where he he's just turning up in people's bedrooms yeah. and and kind of hanging around and not really leaving and being very there, saying get out of here. What are you doing in my bedroom? And he's saying, well, if you're going to be like that, being like emotionally abusive, yeah. if you're going to yeah. be like that, maybe maybe you need to call off and just leaving, sort of thing. Mm. In later episodes, he is incredibly sympathetic. Once you start to find out a little bit more about him Mm. and you spend a bit of time with him, um, one uh, podcasting friend, uh, Stacey, was saying when I mentioned this, uh, that Stacey Taylor, not Stacey Whittle, was saying that she... Thank you for clarifying that. She finds him incredibly sad because all she'd picked up on was there's a heavy dementia subtext with Mm. him. Mm Mm-hmm. But the thing that I find fascinating about him and also stresses me out a little bit because I'm quite concerned that this is going to become something that causes arguments later on and I don't want to argue with people about Adventure Time is the show is... If you take it as read that that character is the Mm. nearest thing to a sex offender in that world, the representation of him later on is very much as a person so demented by loneliness... Mm and mental illness that these ways of behaving just seem perfectly normal to him and that's a very nuanced it's actually a a way of dealing with Mm. the world that really appeals to me and i'm really sympathetic to it's a Mm. very nuanced reading of Mm. why uh normal people might do bad things i've said lots of times i don't believe in good and bad people uh and i know that's not that controversial the thing to say but certainly when you're talking about sex offenders and stuff people get a little bit uh, less comfortable with it um but it's in a cartoon that people love and it presents a very nuanced view of why some people are driven to do very bad things it mm-hmm. never excuses the bad things he does 
but it does show him as a character that you are supposed to feel some empathy for. Um, there are episodes of that show later on that you haven't seen yet, James, that flat out almost make me cry. Oh, God. If it wasn't for my son being right next to me, I probably would oh. cry because they're so Will, will you not cry in front of him? I won't cry in front of him. I won't, I won't have him believe that's how man behaves. No, you mustn't. You mustn't let him feel that's how men behaves. How men behaves? Yeah. No. no. Man's are strong. You should watch lots of Adventure Time. It's really good. Who are you talking to now? You. Oh, okay. I'll watch other things. Like Bojack Horseman. That's very good. I've seen that. Is oh, that on the Netflix? Yeah, I think that's on the good. Netflix. Yeah, I really like it. What is it about? It's uh, about a horse who was the star of a sitcom in the 90s. Um, and he's just trying to deal with his life in the sort of. and his waning celebrity. It sounds fun and a bit dumb. Oh, it's very dark. I like dark cartoons mm. racist i love uh, t- uh aqua teen hunger force yes i tried explaining that to someone recently and explained to them that they're kind of named for a superhero team but they're not really a superhero yeah. team and there's no they're not teens and none of it's underwater <laughs> and they're not really a force for anything yeah. the only thing that's accurate is hunger because one of them's uh uh fries Yes. It's called Frylock. Yeah. One of them's called Meatwad, and he's yeah. basically a burger. Oh, don't. I'm quite peckish. I love I? Meatwad. Uh, that sounds like a, mm. a, just yeah, a general statement about sexy times, but no, I love Meatwad, the character. And one of them's uh, just, uh, he's milkshake, he's a milkshake, and he's an arsehole. Yes. I feel like I've talked about this before from the look you're giving me. No, no, I just, I know, and then you've made me feel hungry, and then all of a sudden I've become aware of the fact that I'm hungry and... I want to go home and eat my tea. We can do that soon. Yeah, we should probably in a minute. I have a question about children, though. I can't see the clock. It's doing my head in. Has anything... We, we've got a little want, bit a little I, bit I don't, want to, I don't want to over-entertain people. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to over-stimulate Yeah, I don't people. want to oversaturate people. Not so people. close to bedtime. No, exactly. They'll just be up all night. Bedtime. That's a, I was, that was a thing I was going to talk about. Uh, do you want to talk about that? We've only I can got, do. We've got a couple of minutes. Because um, Scarlett started school, um, and we had been getting increasingly laxadaisical with bedtime. Oh, yeah. Um, but we've started a new routine. And, and to be fair, a little while ago, because we were we were sharing things like Mr. Tumble, so forth, the iPad had become part of bedtime. Oh, yeah. And I was noting that, that Scarlett, on occasion, and to be fair, this has been led by Nicola, um, especially because she listens to this, I need to make that very, very clear. But Nikki has really taken the lead on this, and she's made it really successful. Um, Good for her. Yeah, well, no, don't be, don't be, because, you know, she may take terrible retribution against you. Um, <laughs> we noticed, I think she can tell I'm joking. Well, I don't know, it's it's very hard with you, Nick. Um, always. Always, yeah. <laughs> We're like one of those radio uh, things. We should just get uh, one of those horrible uh, drive-time radio things. We should yeah. get a klaxon and just Definitely. make horrible jokes about boobies. We did. We, we kind of did that once on the other show, and I'm not sure how well it went down, to be honest with you. I'm not very good at it. I still got, I've still got that soundboard on my iPad, actually. <laughs> but um, so Scarlett was looking at the iPad and stuff, and funnily enough, would you believe it, uh, she was being a little bit hyper-stimulated before bed. And she, she was ha- increasingly having trouble settling. So she started school, and um, we know that we've got to be a lot more responsible. We have to take care of her, her sleep. It's re- it is genuinely important. Um, I know different parents have different, different attitudes towards set sleep times and the like, and, and Danny Baker I'm very fond of. Mm-hmm. Um, in his first autobiographical book, um, Autobiography, I believe it's called, how many is he planning? Because Jordan had loads. Well, they, he, he, the second is just coming out. I think he's. I think he's doing it in two. But he's actually had a really interesting and full life. Um, but he, he said his kids never had any set bedtimes. They went to bed when they were tired, and they were fine. I'm. I'm not sure. My my child will need all the advantages I think she can get um, in life, and I think one of the advantages you can give them at school is them being clear headed. And awake. So the the new bedtime routine is quarter to seven in the bath, and we have this really nice um, uh, Johnsons and Johnsons do this sort of lavender um, bubble bath, very relaxing. Finish the bath, and then it's um, mummy and daddy's bed um, for a couple of stories, 
and then it's bed and she goes to sleep really quickly now and she's in bed no later than eight o'clock she goes to bed really really um quickly but i'd be interested to know and that's working for us and it's great but kids are different i'd be very interested to know people listening what their bedtime routines are what works for some people what works for us for others for us it, it's just from my point of view is getting over being a lazy bastard um because it's much easier to sort of lie there and watch the ipad with her and then take her to bed than it is so and that isn't really fair and i like to think i'm a good parent but that's really shit parenting in my opinion but it'd be really interesting to hear from other people about what's worked for them and what hasn't yeah absolutely that's uh we need to get better at actually doing something with the feedback we get from people when we get it, though. We've got a lovely email from uh, one of our listeners mm. that we need to get to at some point. Well, I, I had had one that was quite personally directed at me, and to be honest with you, it was very pleasant, but I'm having trouble responding to it because I still don't take people saying nice things to me very well at all. It wasn't about you, James. No, I'm Well, I mean, it, 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 it was about you. Well, it was about that individual. But yeah, the, yeah. Did it, 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 I had an involvement in it, but that isn't oh, the, that isn't really, that isn't so, the email I'm talking about. Oh, I, I, I know I'm self-absorbed. Oh, don't! I, I get I'm really one of the things I'm most self-conscious about is being self-absorbed. He says I, I'm on four fucking podcasts and I'm worried about being self-absorbed. Um. Also, we've got a little bit of audio that I think we're going to play out with. Uh, well, mm. we'll put it after yeah. the final theme yeah. so that it doesn't mess with anyone's listening experience. I should probably stop yawning down the mic. Stop yawning down the fucking mic, James. Mm. Uh, yeah, so that so that it doesn't interfere with anybody else's mm. listening experience. The uh, I'll stick it after the credit. That's an awful way of putting it. It's not credits. It's not credits. It's the end. Just the, the end, end theme. Thing. Yeah. And uh, and it makes it sound like I'm just mm-hmm. hiding mm-hmm. it away there. Blum. Mm-hmm. Blum. But they are northern, blum. and I don't want to confuse matters. Blum. 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 But blum. what are you doing? Blum. What is I'm that? I'm doing a bed. It's our theme tune. I'm doing a. Do-dum, do-dum, blum. Do you think Blop. that's okay? Blop. Good, that's nice. I bet it's a bed for you to talk over. I have a question for parents, um, especially of boys. Although mm. I don't know if this is a problem for you, and I have asked Reddit. So this is something earlier today. So this is something okay. we can talk about uh, maybe next week. Uh, I think it's normal for little boys to be quite rough. Yes, but as they get bigger, mm. they get stronger. Yeah. And certainly with Noah, he doesn't do this to other children or to other people, but with Amy and I, he slaps us yeah, yeah, quite yeah. a lot and and uh, scratches and pokes and stuff like that. I th- I, I, Scarlett did the same at the same age. And as I understand it, there's not really a lot. I mean, they don't really understand about consequences and stuff no. at, at this age. Mm-hmm. He's still very young. Mm-hmm. But I was just wondering if anybody else had any just sort of uh, behaviour changes that they made in their behavior that seemed to soothe this a little bit mm. neither of us are hurt we're not worried about this i felt like i had to make this caveat on on reddit a lot we understand that this is kind of normal mm. but it is something it is something that uh that we get hurt quite a lot <laughs> i've got lots of scratches on my face and stuff um and so if other people have found ways that mm. eased that behavior that'd be excellent as I'm finding it hard to be too sympathetic because my daughter uses my balls as a trampoline. So Noah is really good at throwing stuff, mm. and normally he's got these soft, like this little football and this little squashy yeah. ball that he uh, that he throws, and it's fine. But he's got this little hard plastic ball that came mm. with something. And yesterday I was sitting with him in my boxer shorts in the morning while Amy had mm. a lie in, and he threw it and just completely got me in the, yeah, in the ouchies. Problem. Yeah. It was right in the ouch. He's good. Yeah. He's really good. Yeah. And it's, part- too, it's too late, though, isn't it? Because obviously you've already done another one up, Amy. So yeah. he's trying to stop. By the way, I, I've got a question for you. Are you purposely trying to get in sync with um, um, William and Kate, the royal couple? No, they're trying to do it to us. Oh, right, I, I've noticed that. Mm. It's not right. It's they weird. need to back the fuck off. That those is two. weird, though, don't you think? Yeah. And I mean. You know, I'm sure the local paper will start using mm. us to bury important local news stories. Yeah, most certainly. You should contact the Echo um, uh, and say, well, we were pregnant at the same time as them last time. I'm sure they're, 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 we're the only couple in the country that are basically going for Catholic twins. 
If you've got any, uh, God, I'm really going for Catholics yeah, today. I don't, I don't even know what that I've, means. I've let go. I've let go of the Northerners. <laughs> no, it is, it is, uh, isn't Catholic twins where there's there's um, uh, a very close gap. A very uh, usually less than a year, I believe. I've never heard that before, but it makes sense. Yeah, I there's more than a year with us. I'm really though. slowly exposing myself as a bigot, aren't I? I'm really You're slowly. just expanding. You figured, well, the Northerners, I've dealt with them. They're a small mm. group. I'm going to take yeah. on a major religion. Yeah. But the um, See if I can tear it down from the outside. But, yeah, I, I, I could get in touch with the Echo and say if there are any local yeah. counselling, like if there are any local votes going on that mm. are a bit controversial or if there's some zoning yeah. stuff going on that you want to bury mm. for the good of the... Uh, for the good of the local government, mm. uh, please feel free to use us being pregnant. Yeah. Do you know, it, it, I, when I'm rude about the North, it, it's because I hate the South so much. It's, self-loathing, it's self-loathing. Yeah, I, yeah. I kind of love where I live. I also I hate the politics of where I live. We have a local newspaper. It's got a right-wing bias. What's that all about in a yeah. local newspaper with a right-wing bias? It's all ra- you notice it's all wrapped in the union flag at the moment because of the referendum. Fuck me, we couldn't be further for, from Scotland and still be in this country, really. I. It's not our fucking none of our business. I've been trying not to look. Really? At, the, at our local papers, oh, yeah. Oh, it's dreadful. It bothers me at the best of times. I follow our local football team, so it's kind of he's the best source for news of our local football team. I don't think so. I think there's a podcast I've heard about that's going to be coming out monthly. Well, we're trying not much... to just be about our local football team. To be yeah, you can't me. help it. You love them too much. That's true. Um, so, yeah. So, two questions for the listener. That might be too much. One, how mm. do, you, do, do you bother stopping a child that's punching your lots? Do you? Are we talking like, you know, 18-month-old? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, he's not that old. Yeah, 14-month-old. Well. And also, uh, the other question is how school routines. Yeah, um, uh, bedtime, Sleep, routine, bed, bedtime, bedtime routines. routines for, for... For school-aged children. Yeah. And uh, if you... interesting to see how that changes as they get older as well, the routine that you put them in. And does getting them in a good routine early set them on a good path as they get older we are going to have a a problem with this ourselves Amy and I because we're going to have two children with very different needs hopefully not that different to be honest they're very close together it's not going to be all right you know you've done it the right way in my opinion I uh I wanted to start earlier because I'm getting old we're screwed now if we have another one the gap's so big I mean Scarlett will virtually be a a a carer (laughs) That's true. She, For you she, two, do you mean? Yeah, while we're looking after a baby. Because um, you're about, like, uh, 35 each, aren't you? Get stuffed. Oh, I was being nice. No, I'm not. I'm just very conscious that 40 is really creeping up fast now. It's less than... It's about half a year to go now. I um, would say it's less, but that's bullshit. And remember, listen after the credits for a little treat from yes. some of our podcast twins. Thank you. Across the country, mm. up north... Just yeah. to show that we don't hate them. No, I like them very much, more than I should do. Really? I, I like them so much that I keep making uh, rude comments about them. It's a bit like, um, basically with Key Heart, it's essentially I'm pulling his hair. We've forgotten, how to, we've forgotten how to end the podcast. I don't know. <laughs> shall, I just get, shall I just get up and leave? <laughs> um, Santa be walking out the door going, I'm fucking hungry! Thank you for listening, listener. You can... Uh, you can Listen to all of the past episodes at twogrownmen.net. Yeah, you I've can. let the other two domains lapse. Fair Didn't enough. see many points. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, and you can send us emails at 2GM Podcast. Podcast. You do that little squint at me every week, but it's I'm never sure. Podcast, 2GM Podcast at gmail.com. Have I let you down with that so many times you won't trust me? No, I, I get confused. I'm worried. Yeah. Uh, you can also talk to us on Twitter at. Oh, I'm uh, James M O M B. Um, yeah, just because I'm, I want to. Uh, it's an honorific now for yeah. our uh, first podcast. And I'm Nick Site. Uh, there is a two GM pod address, but we haven't really started using that for anything yet. Nick won't give me the password, so I think I've forgotten it. Yeah. Um, and there's a mailing list. You can find details of that. It's tiny Person, letter. Personing list. We agree. Oh, sorry, yeah. Personing list. Tinyletter.com forward slash two GM. I think. Yeah. But you'll find links to that yeah. and full show notes at twogrownmen.net. Thank you very much, James. Don't forget to give generously. Thank you very much, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Hello. Oh, he's back.
Crashed is it on the step we've got for the French windows because Willow's got to... she really likes baby Jake, right? Especially when she's tired, she will just rugby tackle him to the floor because you know, with baby Jake, they end up like cuddling at the end. Oh, that horrible CBB program with the freaky, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I, hate that. Like... I hate that show, but I don't mind it except for Nibbles the rabbit. But that rabbit is fucking evil, that's exactly, but it's like. Well, no, if he's crying, he's not enjoying... The basic rule is, if it makes Rowan cry, don't do it. <laughs> this yeah. is what naughty step explanations have come down. To. The thing is, at the end of the day, all she's doing is teaching him, like, that's how that's how you interact, the two of them. So when he's yeah. older and a bit more robust... Oh, it already happens, because he grabs her hair. And he's took out chunks of her hair before now. Yeah, I mean, this is how it's worked with Ewan and Robert to a certain extent. You know, even with that yeah. gap, it's like, you know... If you encourage him to jump on you when he's little... And he doesn't hurt, right? When he gets to four and a half and he's got a bit of mass and a bit of weight behind him... He will jump on He will keep jumping on you like you're indestructible and it will hurt. Mm. It's weird listening to that two grown men thing when they were talking about, you know, consent, about hugs mm. and stuff. I was just really going through that with Robert now at the moment. Mm. You know, I want a hug, I want a hug. No, if Ewan doesn't want to give you a hug, mm. can't have one. Well, I'm going through that with Willow because, you know, it'll be done something naughty. I want a hug, I want a hug, I want a hug. It's not how it works. And it's like, no, you're not having a hug. And it's like having to hold her back at arm's length. It's like, you're not at all bedtime. You're not having a hug because this is sleeping time. Or, you know, I will have my hand on you in the bed, but you're staying in the bed. Yeah, and you're all, I mean, with Robert, it's until you say, you know, to say sorry, and he just goes, sorry, in like the least sorry way yeah. in the world. But it's kind of like, well, but, yes, but, but you've said it, that's the the thing, you know. But sometimes naughty step is the worst thing in the world. Other times, it's like, you know, she snatched something off, throwing off something off, and it's naughty step, and she'll just take herself. <laughs> and either like... sit there with an exaggerated sulk, or like sit there smiling at you, as if to say, well, this is having no effect on me you and, at you, all. you used to do that, it was really funny. I've been naughty, I'm off to the naughty step now. Yeah. All right, all right then. Yeah. Robert just puts his toys on the naughty step. Yeah, be, 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 Toy has been naughty. Toy goes dad, on the naughty step. Daddy's daddy's not getting cross. I am getting cross. Daddy's getting happier. That was very hard to keep a straight face. It's always been. Um, it's still Hewin's tactic has always been to kind of preemptively punish himself. Mm. It still is. It's just got a bit more advanced, but it's always been a so flagellates himself in front yeah. of him and say, "Look, I'm guilty." Yes, you. Are you going to stop? You can stop. Ban me from doing this now. Like I don't want to ban you from doing that. You don't get to set your punishments. That's not <laughs> how this works. <laughs> right. Digress right. again. Right. You can just cut that out and send it to two grown men. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I may not be joking. Hey, when they're you know older, the thing is when they've got older kids, I feel more relevant. <laughs> it'll it'll be really interesting. It'd be really interesting when the, one of them's got two because at the moment. I'm listening to stuff I'm saying. That's great when once you focus, and I'm not taking away from your parents and challenges, but with with ARBs two being so close together as well. Oh yeah, it's a very different thing. You know, it's like because like today they were both knackered, and you know they love their swimming and stuff, and they're both crapping. And Willow's not potty trained yet. And they're both crapping like anything as well. Because they've both recovered from the illness and now have an appetite like a horse. Yeah, we're still training Robert to wipe his backside, but apart from that, we're there with all that kind Apparently of stuff. Apparently a sticker charts the way to go. Yes. <laughs> I thought he's doing all right. Although I did want to say to James, James, you're so socialist that you deliberately invent this convoluted system to get away from the fact you're giving her money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are essentially just incentivising her with cash. Yeah, but you're creating this really complicated system so that it doesn't look like that. As opposed to saying, right, you've wiped your bum, there's 10p going in the money box. <laughs> but I can see how that feels weird. Yeah. I mean, it would feel me to me, and I'm nowhere near as socialist as James is. I don't know, James ebbs and flows. He goes all libertarian occasion. No, he's the wrong kind of socialist. Right. Right, right we will start. Right, okay. Intro. Go. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs>